Hey everybody, uh, today I'm going to be doing a few things at once in the same video. The first thing that I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get uh, to do some artwork and stroke the ego of one of the uh, most famous guys, the whole king of internets. Uh, his name is PewDiePie, you've heard of him I'm sure. Uh, the opera makes me feel good. I'm going to be doing a painting of him today that uh, I would love to send to him if he was willing to uh, admit the truth. It's actually a three-way battle between PewDiePie, T-Series, and of course Art Class with Dave Dees. We're more than 10% of 1% of the way to our goal of 1 billion subscribers which I think is fair. We don't want every person in the world. Anyway, we're going to be doing that at the same time as we teach you how to go from start to finish, pick a picture that you like, and paint a using a grid as your guidelines for your, uh, your artwork is going to help you a lot. So the first thing that I did was I went and I Google image searched um, a picture of PewDiePie because, again, like I said, PewDiePie, we're doing this for you. We're doing this to give you a little... Hey, PewDiePie, everybody loves you. Hey, your ego, you know, everybody thinks you're so great. You're so wonderful. Why don't you sleep on it a little bit? Tell everybody about Art Class with Dave Dees. And then before you know it, boom, zam! You third place. No, you second. Okay. Art Class with Dave Dees. PewDiePie. Everybody else. We got it, PewDiePie. P-E-W-D-I-E-P-I-E. -E. Images. I'm going to find a good one that we like. That seems like it shows this whole face. We got ourselves a good one right here. I have my snipping tool is right here. I keep mine at the bar. You can always go here and search for it. It's just called the snipping tool. But when I click it, it pops up like this. All right, so here is one of the keys to making this project easier for yourself than it has to be. I'm going to try to use my eyes, and I'm going to look at my canvas look at about what size rectangle it is, about how wide is it versus about how tall is it. Mine is taller than it is wide, so I'm going to try and cut mine in the same thing. I click new over here on my snipping tool. I'm going to come down here, and I'm just going to cut it into about the same rectangle. Got it. Perfect. I'm going to click to save that snip. So that being said, I'm going to head back to Google. And I'm going to look up drawing grid. Okay, so I always go to, uh, draw, I search drawing grid, and I go to this drawing grid tool by Art Tutor. But you should know how many uh, squares wide and how many squares tall or that your canvas can fit. Mine is going to be 18 inches wide, 24 inches tall. I'm going to do 2 inch by 2 inch grid. It's 9 by 12. So I'm going to see how close I can get this. It's probably never going to be perfect. I'm going to click Upload. I'm going to choose my file. I'm going to go to Pictures. So I'm going to open this file. It's going to pop in here. Just click Next. Uh, I'm going to make sure everything everything's the way that I like it. I'm going to click Next. Crop. I don't feel like I need to crop anything. Nothing unnecessary is mixed in there. I'm going to click Next. I want mine to be in black and white, so I'm going to go ahead and take the saturation down until it turns black and white. That looks perfect to me. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to click next. And now here comes the real secret. How wide did I say I wanted it to be? It's going to be 18 wide, but mine are going to be 2 inch boxes. So it's going to be 9 wide. I'm going to switch mine. I always switch mine to white, and I switch mine to 1 pixel. I leave this checked where it says uh, keep boxes square. And then I just click apply grid. And let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and a half. I'm fine with that. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to download it. It's going to be called my Art Tutor Pick. I'm going to go find that, and I'm going to mess around with it, print it out, and I have myself this to go off of. You're going to see that mine is printed out and next to my painting the whole time. And the first thing that you're going to see me do, I'm going to go do it right now, is I'm going to be um, making the grid to match so that I have my guidelines going uh, up and down and side to side on my on my wonderful canvas that I have set up over here for this snow day painting that we're going to do. All right, everybody, I'm excited. Let's get going. Okay, so you see here I have my T-square, and I just start off drawing a line, and then I move my 
ruler over, line it up with the line that I already drew, and I wind up with this nice little grid in here. Just move it over one line at a time, line it up with the last line that you drew, move it over one line at a time, line up with the last line that you drew. Get my black and my white paint out because I totally forgot that I was going to sketch it first. And now you'll watch me and I'm going to go one box at a time in here. Um, I really try not to go, when I, I catch myself, whenever I get carried away and I start going outside the box that I'm working on, and you see me go back and start, I'm like, no, I gotta finish all the shapes in this first box. And you see me, I, I'm a beast, so I start with the most difficult squares that there are. I looked straight for that eye, saw where it fit on my grid, and decided I was gonna take out the, if there's something that I can mess up and make it not look like the person it's supposed to look like, I wanna go ahead and mess it up right now so that I can start fixing it right now or decide that this is not a project that I'm going to be capable of doing. Uh, a lot of people will build that outside shape around their head. They'll um, build in everything that they need around and then they'll be left with just the eyes, nose, and mouth and they get kind of a chicken and they also have no idea if they're capable of doing it correctly yet or not. So don't be a chicken who has no idea what's going on. You want to be an artist who does know what's going on instead of being a chicken. Uh, laying in his beard, I get a little mesmerized by it myself every once in a while, I'm not gonna lie. We're doing a great, great job here, really laying out all the details, I'm just watching it unfold. And you see that I'm still, even as I start painting, I'm trying to keep my darkest darks are coming in now, I'm laying in the black wherever it really truly is black. Um, one of the things you can always know is that you'll be able to come back in and make this a little less um, less exactly black if you need to. Like if you need to come back in and paint some gray over it, if you went a little crazy with the black on this part, then you can come back in and do that. See, I'm very carefully painting these squares up here that have his individual streaks of blonde hair. Um, I, I see what he was going for with that harsh aesthetic of the blonde hair and to get people like, how could you possibly click past that, you know? He's got a very dark beard, um, and then he has this very strong sort of 90s raver blonde hair game going on in the uh, upstairs. So like, you can't really can't really mess mess with that. Like, how could you pass? Uh, it, it makes sense that he has millions of followers with things like, with techniques like that. You know, like make make my hair. It's a combination of colors that could never exist in the world of human beings, and then all the nine-year-olds will click. So the details and the eyes, you'll see that I will start off laying them in and they look a little kooky. And then as I go along, I come back in and I rework things. It's all about start with your drawing, get your drawing right. Bring in your darks, then fill in some areas with some medium colors, then bring in the lights. Now take a look at it and see, do I need to bring in some more medium? Did I put in too many lights? Do I need to bring in some more dark? Did my medium cover up some important parts of my dark? Do I need to work it darker? Do I need to push back to the middle with some more medium? Do I need to make it lighter? And I just go through and I work everything like that. You'll see a few times that I take some breaks. It helps a lot as an artist to get away from your canvas and then come back. Once I have the drawing laid in, it really starts getting a lot faster. Things start moving. Uh, it also helps me paint much faster that I uh, accelerate my, my video to 20 times the speed of normal life. So I feel like that, that helps me get my projects done a lot faster. Being able to just click one button and all of a sudden be painting at 20 times the speed that I normally am is quite helpful. Obviously, PewDiePie has been feeling the pressure from Art Class with Dave Dees and he can feel us coming up behind him. We're now past 1,500 subscribers, so soon enough we'll be caught up with them and with PewDiePie and T-Series. But um, I've been playing Magic the Gathering for 25 years and I've made some videos on here about Magic the Gathering, not as many as some of my famous friends have, but I noticed that PewDiePie, you know, he, he, he saw that that was a thing that I was doing, he said Dave D's, Art Class with Dave D's, this is where all the trends are getting set on the internet nowadays. They found out about the Big Chungas only several weeks after the meme was already dead. Um, they found out about Shaggy only a few weeks after that meme was dead. So they're really starting to get on the cutting edge. So when he saw that, that playing magic was something that I wanted to do, I'm proud to say that I inspired a man like him to do such a thing. Uh, it's also just one of the greatest games of all time, and they just came out with a better version of it. So if you're not playing Magic Arena, you're really wasting your click time, your screen time, playing whatever you're playing instead. 
So back to the painting, you notice that, again, I'm just still going in, and if something looks too dark, I paint some light over top of it. If something looks too light, I paint something dark. I'm following, trying to do one-ish square at a time. Sometimes if I get a color mixed really nice, like you notice under where he has, under his bangs there, where he has all those very uh, heavily producted pieces of hair. That I'm going in, now I'm really getting down to the last final crunchy little details of I'm starting to get some things like you see the part of the headphone there that I painted where it's really starting to have some dimension to it and look 3D. Uh, I'm going in and you saw what I was talking about earlier where I painted that that hair was almost all light gray, it was just a big shape of light gray and now I can go back in after it dried because I'm using acrylic paints and they dry rather quickly and I can add in those shadows that start really showing you again like we were talking about those individual like dip it's almost like he dips each hair into cement I mean I think it's it's really honorable that he puts as much work effort into it as he does given it his best shot uh, you gotta honor him for that he's got the hair that he's you know just each piece seems like it is truly I don't want this to be taken the wrong way. I don't mean any of this as an insult. PewDiePie, you and I can take over the internet together. I don't, few people put the effort into uh, creating individual weapons out of every strand of hair. Laying in some real light, you'll notice that the further away from the center of the painting that I get, the more out from it that I get, the a little bit less detailed. Um, that's sort of a way of forcing atmospheric perspective, but also to force an emphasis. An emphasis being, I want everybody looking at his eyes. I really want the main point of this painting to be the place where I started. That one raised eyebrow that really kind of shows that personality that he brings, that, that sort of funky, silly, crazy, fun personality that he brings. To uh, the opera makes me feel good. Like I have a group of guys and girls that have been my students in the past and they love to comment on my videos and they were telling me just recently how much that they love, oh, just love all of my Pokédex videos. And uh, those are the people that I make my videos for right now. I have other people that are coming along, you know, as I said, our numbers are getting pretty crazy. We're up to 1,500 subscribers. Um, so as, as all these new people show up and it's just kind of a tidal wave of humanity crashing into our, our station or our, our channel every single day, as those things show up, I can't focus on every single new person. Every time that a new town in Brazil becomes obsessed with my channel and all all the people start following and worshiping my channel, I can't can't change everything I'm doing. Start doing all of my episodes in Brazilian uh, or in what do they speak? Portuguese. I uh, instead I, I stay focused on my true fans and on the people that inspire me to do good things, and I get it done. I mean, this painting has really come together, and it's absolutely amazing. All right, so PewDiePie, I did, I did my part, and I painted your face and made it look freaking awesome. All right, I'm glad, I'm glad we've decided to do this. I'm going to assume that you've already shared this out, and that I already have one billion people going to this channel over here. You need to just join this club. It's a two-person club. It's me and you. And you just need to join up, and then together, victory. Do you understand?